Hi guys! I'm going to show you a little bit about some quilts and particularly about some of the, the square designs that we have. So if you notice on our slideshow we talked about four patches to start with. It's one of the first kinds of uh, quilt squares that you could make. So obviously a four patch would be four squares. So here I have two of one color and two of another color and if you notice they are always diagonal from each other. They're never touching each other on the flat sides, always on the corners. So I made this out of collage, which means I found um, some pattern paper. If you have some something like that, you can make your own pattern paper by coloring your own paper and then cutting out into to squares and using that. Uh, or you can just color, cut, make your squares on here and then just color directly on here and make your patterns. Make sure your patterns are the same though if you're gonna do that. So this pattern and this pattern should be the same kind of pattern. Um, I used a six inch square. Sometimes it's easier to kind of measure things out, so make sure you have your ruler. The rulers are your BFFs. And my squares inside of my six inch square are all three inches, so they'll fit from my four square. Now I'm gonna show you how to do one of the variations from this. So we talked about how there's the four, four, four patch, but then you can also cut your squares into triangles and make new designs. So when you're doing that, when you're cutting, you're always going to be cutting on the diagonal, so from this corner to this corner. And sometimes it helps to fold your squares so you can really make sure that you're cutting right on that line. If you can see the fold there, we're going to cut right on that diagonal. Now you're still only going to be using four squares, but now you're just going to have more shapes to work with. So I'm going to do my green squares first. And for uh, first graders and second graders, you might have already, you might remember that we did this earlier this year. And so remember we talked about some of the different kinds of four patch designs that you can make, especially with the triangles. So there's things like the pinwheel, or there are things like, I think one of them was called broken dishes. Um, some of you invented your own patterns. A lot of these names of these square patterns, uh, the women who designed them um, gave them names of things that they um, used around the house or things that inspired them from their, from their everyday life. So if you notice, we now have four triangles of one kind and four triangles of the other. But obviously, if I put these two triangles together, it makes my square. So there's a little bit of geometry right there. Now, what we're going to try and do is make a design using our triangles. So we're going to, we can rotate them, right? So I know if I put these two together, that's one square. So I might kind of change that. So let's try and do, let's do, let's do the pinwheel because that one's always really, really fun. This is, can be a little bit tricky, but we're still going to make our four squares. If it helps you on your square to kind of measure halfway, so halfway between six would be three. So I'm going to do that on the top and the bottom. And I'm also going to do it right here on either ends. And remember when you're using a ruler, always line up your zero with the edge of, of where you're measuring. So I'm going to make my line in between so I can see my four squares to begin with. That might help me make my pinwheel. And if you have glue or a glue stick, this will help you with this project. So we're going to start with the red. The red's going to be kind of our pinwheel. We're going to start with one over here. And then we're going to take that same shape and we're going to rotate, we're going to turn it, so it's going to go this way now. And then we're going to match it with this one, and this one's going to turn like this. So it's always, if you notice, kind of in the corner right here. And therefore, the last one, we're going to turn it, and there's our pinwheel, right? And then we can start to fill in with our other triangles right in the other spaces. So even though we're using two different patterns, those two triangles come together to make one whole square. And that is our pinwheel, okay? So obviously you would glue that down. When you're gluing, making sure where should you be putting your glue, not in the middle, but on the edges, if you can, so all the edges are sticking down, okay? What if, for those of you who want a little bit of a challenge, um, you wanna do, on the next thing we have are the nine patches. 
So this is a little bit trickier. I'm going to suggest this more for my fourth and fifth graders and third graders if you really want to try this. This is a little tricky. So the way it works is if you notice my squares are a lot smaller than the squares I was using before. These are three inch squares. These squares are two inch squares because we want to fit three of them in a row. If you notice there's three and three and three. So we have nine squares all together. Five of them are one pattern and four of them are a different one. Okay, so with this one, you're gonna have to make sure, again, you're measuring with your ruler. These are gonna be two inch squares, okay? So nine patch, again, you can play around with contrast, things that are darker versus lighter. You can do opposite colors. So these are not technically opposite colors, but um, if I wanted to do opposite colors, instead of the green, I probably would put yellow because it would stand out next to the purple, okay? So let's look at a variation of a nine patch. I'm gonna show you guys the shoe fly, which is also pretty common. So we have, here are my five squares of this one and four squares of this pattern. But now I'm only gonna really, this time when we cut to make our triangles, you know, we're still cutting on the diagonal. So I'm actually really only gonna cut, let's see, one, two, I think it's only two that I need to cut as the diagonal to make a shoe fly. So you don't have to cut all of these into a triangle unless you wanna make your own design. If you're making a shoe fly, you only need to cut four of these. And remember, the two, even though they're smaller, they still make a square, okay? So shoe fly works like this. Actually, I'm gonna have to cut one of these two. Because I forgot. All right, so we have two of each kind. So the one in the middle, we'll start in the corner actually. So what we're gonna do is on the outside, we have the purple and on the inside, we have the yellow. That's one square. Next one is that we're gonna put in, we can decide whether it's gonna be the purple or the yellow. I'm gonna put it as the purple. And then this next one, again, I'm gonna turn it this way turn it this way. So if you notice, not only is there like a pattern in here, but there's also symmetry. So if I had a line right down the middle of this, whatever's on this side is going to be the same on this side. And you actually notice even if I had a line of symmetry here, what's on this side is the same on this. It's a mirror image. Okay, so there's some of your math. And we're going to put this in the middle. It's kind of our center. Okay, we're going to put these two here. Oh, I think I might need Extra, what happened? What happened? Might have made a mistake. All right, so we're gonna do this and like this, and put these on the outside. Does anybody see what my mistake was? What should go here instead? Shouldn't be this one, it should probably be the purple paper, which I don't have an extra of this size. So just for the sake of today, it would go there. So there's our nine patch. This is the shoe fly design. Again, you can design it however you like. So you can have a couple of different versions of nine patches if you'd like, if you want the challenge.